And everybody said, Amen. Happy New Year to you. I think this is my first time of seeing you this year. A new dawn. A new direction. A new power. A new success. And a new progress in every life. Your families will prosper. The work of the Lord will prosper in your hand. And this year you will do what you have never done. You see what you have never seen. God's glory will be upon your life. Am I talking to somebody there? Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you. We bless your name. We thank you for the privilege of all our workers coming together again. We thank you for those who are just joining us as prospective workers. And we thank you for this work of the Lord. We are praying, Lord, this year, everybody will move forward. Yeah. Our brothers and sisters will move forward. Yeah. Every family will move forward. Yeah. Our students, our children, young people will move forward in Jesus' name. Yeah. Your blessings will be unprecedented this year. Yeah. That, Lord, we we'll look back as uh, uh, we get to the end of the year, Jesus tarries and will say, we've never seen it like this before. Let your hand be mighty upon every life tonight. In Jesus' name we pray. God bless you. We are looking at Isaiah chapter 34. Isaiah chapter 34. And I am reading from verse 16. Isaiah chapter 34. And we are looking at verse 16. Seek ye out of the book of the Lord and read. No one of these shall fail. None shall want her mate, for my mouth it has commanded, and his spirit it has gathered them. As we look at this verse, it refers to the book, and it's the most important book. It's the most important book for the wise, and the Lord is saying, it's giving us a book. Is giving humanity a book. Is giving all men, all women, everywhere. Is giving us a book. And he calls it the book. Somebody who has been so knowledgeable in his lifetime was about dying. And as was about dying, this man was a man of books. He had read this and read this and read that. And he has uh, established himself as a knowledgeable person in society. As he was dying, he called a friend. A friend was nearby. He said, bring me the book. And the friend wondering what kind of book he'd like to read at this time. When he said, bring me the book. So the friend said, I see that on the shelf in your library, there's so many books. And he says, which one am I bringing you? And then the man replied, he said, at a time like this, when you are about to pass on, there is only one book. Only one book that will see you through to heaven. And so when he said, bring me the book, he was talking about the Bible. It's the most important book you will ever read. So now, later, before death or after death, Everyone will realize that this is the most important book. It's a great book. It's a wonderful book. It's an empire book. And it is the book of the Lord. See the way the Lord told Isaiah. Look at that verse 16 again. Seek ye out of the book of the Lord. It's not a book of man. This one is not produced or generated or written or inspired or influenced by any man. This is the Lord himself, the Lord of glory. This is the Lord himself, the Lord of all knowledge. This is the omniscient one that knows everything from beginning to the very end. And then he has given us the book that contains the mind of God. So he says, seek ye out the book, the book of the Lord, and read. We need to read. Because if you're going to get the knowledge that will make you what you ought to be, if you're going to get the knowledge that will save your soul, sharpen your life, 
transform your life and make you to know the way you ought to go you have to read not only that you read you need to retain what you read or the point of reading if you're not retaining what you have read not only that you retain you meditate the lord is speaking to me here the word of the lord is coming to me straight this is coming from heaven to earth what do I get out of this? What profit do I get out of this? What inspiration do I get out of this? What influence does this have in in my life? You read it, you retain it, you meditate on it, you apply it. How does this apply to my personal life, to my private life, to my professional life, to my family life? How does this apply to my ministerial life? You, you kind of see how to apply this to your life. You believe it. As if, uh, you know, a bosom friend is talking to you and is saying, look at this, look at this, look at that. And this is the way to go. You read. You retain. You meditate. You apply. You obey. What if uh, the doctor gives you some things to use and it says this will solve the problem. You appreciate the doctor. You appreciate the pills. You look at the pills and you know that this will do exactly what it has been saying to do. But you don't apply it. You don't take it. The way it's been prescribed. And so when the word of God is given to us, if we're going to benefit, thank God I'm going to benefit. You will obey the word. Obey the word. And then you share the word. You tell other people if it's helping you, if it's doing good in your life, doing good in your family, and if it's showing you the way to go, you have to tell other people to so that the light you have seen, uh, other people will see that same light. Look at that verse 16 again. It says, seek ye out the book, the book of the Lord, and read. No one of these shall fail. A lot of promises in the word of God, in the book of the Lord. And it says, none of those promises shall fail. There's promise for salvation. There's promise for strength. There's promise for power. There's promise for courage. There's promise for authority. There's promise for healing. There's promise for sanctification. There's promise for how to get to heaven. And it says, none of these promises shall fail. No matter what challenge you have, any day, any moment, any time, there is a promise that is made to address that issue in your life. And it says, no one of these shall fail. But you know there are warnings in the book of the Lord. There are judgments in the book of the Lord. And the Lord is saying none of those warnings will fail. And none of those declarations of the Lord, pronouncements of the Lord will say, if you do this, this will be what will happen. If you sow this, this is what you are going to reap. If you do this on earth, this is what you are going to get on the other side of the grave in eternity. It says none of them shall fail. And it says none shall want her mate. That is, they are coupled together. They are linked together. They are connected together. And it says none of them will fail. It says for my mouth. Here's the almighty God talking. It says in my mouth. It says uh, don't take this as ordinary that uh, so and so said so and so said. You, you know sometimes I hear people when they are, when they are preaching and they will say Moses said, Paul said, they will say Joshua said, they will say David said, they will say Solomon said, I've not heard them yet say Judas said, I hope they are not thinking they are reading the word of Judas, but this is the word of the almighty God. I said it's the word of the almighty God. You, you know when you say so and so said, so and so said, sometimes you are tempted to feel that well, that's what he said, that's his idea, that's his opinion. This is the word of the Lord. What do you hold in your hand? I said, what are you holding in your hand? It says, for my mouth it has commanded and his spirit has gathered them. His spirit has gathered them. As you come from Genesis and you go on uh, uh, through a uh, revelation, it took about 1,600 years to gather everything together. And it says, my spirit has gathered them. As you look at everything that you read here, it, well, there are more than 40 authors and there's no contradiction in them. Everything is united, united together. And it's because it's the spirit of the Lord that has gathered everything 
everything he says, his spirit, it has gathered them. This is what the Lord we're talking about. is the book that reveals the mind of God. You are going to know the mind of somebody if he doesn't talk to you. He's quiet. He doesn't say anything. How do you know his mind? But this is the mind of God. It shows the way of salvation. The way of salvation. There's no other way and there's no other book that shows you the way of salvation. This is the book. It opens the door to heaven. As you think of getting to heaven, everybody wants to get to heaven. The man on the street, the man in the village, the man in the, in the city, the man everywhere, the woman everywhere, will want to get to heaven. And this is the book that opens the door to heaven. It is the one that discloses the gates of hell. That is, it reveals to us, it discloses to us that there is a place called hell. It guides the soul in the way of happiness and holiness towards heaven. That is, this is the only book that can tell us categorically that this is the way walk ye therein. The way of happiness. Happiness here, happiness on the other side. Holiness here and heaven on the other side. It is the book that warns the worldly minded man the futility of gaining the whole world and losing his own soul. You see all the other books are encouraging them to keep on driving and to keep on seeking and to keep on searching and to keep on acquiring and to keep on possessing. This is the only book that tells us what shall he profit a man if he gains the whole world and he loses his own soul. It is the book, the most important book. Having knowledge of all other books and being ignorant of this book will make a person to regret for all eternity the people that like to read. The only book they don't read is the Bible. They read this, they read this, they read that, and would you know, even if you had all the knowledge that's in all the books of the world, and you are ignorant of this one single book, you'll be the most man, the, the most miserable of all men, of all women, all through eternity. Because that will spell, that will mean eternal damnation for the knowledgeable. And you know, learning this one, believing this one, reading this one, obeying this one, meditating on the message of this single book eventually will lead to eternal salvation. And though you may be, be ignorant of all the other books on earth, if you know the contents of this one single book, you've known enough to get you to heaven, and I pray you'll get there in Jesus' name. As we come together as workers today, I'm talking to you on the most important book for the wise. The most important book for the wise. We're looking at each other three perspectives. Number one, the preeminence of the book of the Lord is the book of the Lord. The book of the Lord. This is the book that the Almighty God Himself has given us and has revealed His mind and has revealed what is going to happen on the other side of the grave. He has revealed that to us and is preeminent, is above all, is exalted above any other book, any other knowledge, the preeminence of the book of the Lord. Point number two, the proclamation of the book for liberation. The proclamation of the book for liberation. You know why we read the Bible? Because it liberates us. You know why we share the contents of the Bible? Because it liberates the people we're talking to. You know why we're preaching the Bible? Because it's to liberate them. It's to set them free. It's to save them. It's to solve their problem. And whenever you are proclaiming the word of God, you are preaching the word of God, understand this number of the very single purpose in your mind. It is to liberate. And so is the book for the liberation of all people. The proclamation of the book for liberation. Number three, our progress through the book of landmarks. Our progress through the book of landmarks. You see, the Bible is not just um, a big book that is just jumbled together, compiled together, without any purpose, without any guide, without any pivot, and without any standard, 
and without any doctrine and without any definite sin that we hang on this point and this point and this point. There are landmarks and it's uh, the book of landmarks. Uh, you can look at the landmarks in various ways. You can look at what he told Abraham. And then look at what he told Moses. And look at what he told Joshua. And then you come to David. And then you come to John the Baptist. And then you come to all the prophets. And then you come to Jesus himself. And you come to the apostles. Land marks in the Bible. Or you can put it another way. You can look at the beginning of our relationship with God's salvation. And look at sanctification. And look at the Holy Ghost baptism. And look at the gifts of the Spirit. And look at evangelism. And look at the work he has given you to do evangelism, you can look at that and say, these are the landmarks. Or you can look at eschatology. You can say that what you are waiting for now, there's a landmark, and it is uh, the rapture. And then there's going to be the great tribulation. Then there's the second coming of the Lord. And then there's the millennial reign. Then there is the, he the new heaven and the new earth. There are landmarks in the word of God. You, you cannot just come to the word of God and just, you know, open it and uh, haphazardly you look at the land marks and everything you say, everything you preach is based on the landmarks in the Bible. It's the book of landmarks. Point number three, our progress through the book of landmarks. Number one, tell me number one there. It's the preeminence of the book of the Lord. We're coming back to Isaiah chapter 34. Isaiah chapter 34. I'm reading from verse 16. Seek ye out the book of the Lord. Uh, you see what he calls it there is the book of the Lord. That's what we're saying. There is the book of the Lord and it is it's preeminent, it's higher, it's greater, and it's better, it's deeper, it's richer, it's more enlightening than any other book on earth. The preeminence of the book of the Lord. Seek ye out the book of the Lord and read. No one of these shall fail. None shall what have made. For my mouth it has commanded, and the Spirit it has gathered them. We're coming to Jeremiah chapter 30. Jeremiah chapter 30. I'm reading here from verse 2. Jeremiah chapter 30. And we're looking at verse 2. It tells us here in verse 2. It says, Thus speaketh the Lord God of Israel, saying, Write thee. All the words that I have spoken unto thee in a book. It says, uh, I've been speaking to you, Jeremiah. I spoke about a lot of things about Babylon, about Judah, about uh, Moab, about many nations. And he told them what will happen. And he said, what have you seen, Jeremiah? He said, this is what I've seen. He said, you tell the people, I will hasten my word to perform it. And now he says, this word and this book that is preeminent, higher than any other, he says, Thus says, speaketh the Lord God of Israel, saying, Write thee all the words that I have spoken unto thee. All the words that I have spoken unto thee. Don't add your thoughts. Don't add your ideas. Don't add the proverbs of the land. Don't add ideas of a college people. Don't add any other tradition. Only the words that I have spoken unto you, write in a book. That's why it's called the book of the Lord. And as uh, you read it, I pray it will benefit your life. I want a greater amen there. Yeah. Look at Jeremiah chapter 36. Jeremiah chapter 36. And I'm reading from verse 4. It says that Jeremiah called Baruch, the son of Neriah. And the Baruch wrote from the mouth of Jeremiah. Look at this. All the words of the Lord. All the words of the Lord. All the words of the Lord. You see, we have the totality, the entire the completeness of the word of the Lord. It's not that we're still waiting for something. There is a problem that uh, nothing in the Bible has solution for, and therefore we're waiting for any other thing. It says there's something we're waiting for. All the words of the Lord, you're right. Look at this, which he has, which he had spoken unto him. That is what the Almighty God has spoken to Jeremiah upon a roll. Tell me what follows there. 
of a book, of a book. It's the book, the preeminent book, the book that is higher than every other book. And this, uh, this one contains all the words of the Lord. Look at uh, verse 5. It says, And Jeremiah commanded Baruch, saying, I am shut up. I cannot go into the house of the Lord. Therefore, go thou and read in the role. Go there and read. Baruch, I'm uh, giving you the book. These are the words of the Lord. You cannot, you know, tell them whatever you want to tell them. I'm sympathizing with you because the Babylonians are coming and they're going to take our people away. I sympathize. Don't, don't, don't sympathize. Just give them the word of the Lord that you have heard from me. And then it says the words of the Lord in the ears of the people in the Lord's house upon the fasting day. And also thou shalt read them in the ears of all Judah that come out of their cities. Thank God we have the book of the Lord. I say thank God I have the book of the Lord. Look at Exodus chapter 24. Exodus chapter 24. And I'm reading here from verse 7. Exodus chapter 24. We're reading from verse 7. It tells us in verse 7. And he took the book of the covenant. You see, it is in the book the Lord has made covenant with us. He's given us the condition of the covenant. If we're going to associate with him, if we're going to be affiliated with him, if we're going to be connected with him, there's a covenant. And this covenant is based on what he has written in his book. And he took the book of the covenant and he read in the audience of the people. And they said, and they said, we're going to say this together, one, two, three, go. That's, that's a good trial. You can do better now. One, two, three, go. As the new covenant people, where are you? One, two, three, go. All that the Lord has said, there's nothing redundant. There's nothing we can, you know, take off and say, okay, this one is not important. It's the word of the Lord. It came out of the very mouth of the Lord. It will grant us power. It will grant us authority. It will grant us enablement. This is the word that will encourage us and put strength and power inside us to live from here until we get to heaven and you will never be tired. And you'll never be weary. It is the word that brings power into our lives and makes us to know that we are special and we have this relationship with God. That's why the people said all that the Lord has said we will do and be obedient. Deuteronomy, I'm reading from chapter 18. Deuteronomy chapter 18, and we're reading from verse 18. Deuteronomy 18. 18. It says, I will raise them up, a prophet, capital P, from among their brethren, like unto thee, and will put my words in his mouth. You cannot mistake that. You cannot miss this one. The Lord is saying, that book is not just a book you can debate. It's not a book you can critique. It's not a book you can analyze this way and that way. It's not a book, you can, I don't accept that. I don't cherish that. I don't understand that. I, I don't think that's all right. He said, it's my word. This is the almighty talking. This is the creator of the heaven and, and the earth talking. And this is the one that is greater than angels and greater than all men. He said, I'm going to send the capital P prophet from among their brethren. And I will put my words in his mouth. And he shall speak unto them all. Somebody shout all. all. Somebody shout all. All. All that I shall command him. You see, the, the, the Lord Jesus Christ, that's who that is referring to when he said, I will send the prophet unto them like unto thee. And I'm going to put my word in his mouth. And all that I, sh I command him, that is going to speak. Look at chapter 3 of Acts. Acts of the Apostles chapter 3. And I'm reading from verse 26. Acts of the Apostles chapter 3. We're looking at verse 26. For Moses truly said unto the fathers, A prophet shall the Lord your God raise up unto you of your brethren like unto me. Uh, it's, uh, this is uh, Peter quoting, uh, you know, from Deuteronomy chapter 18. And it says, he says, Him shall ye hear in uh, how many things? How many things? Stay awake. I said how many things? 
all things whatsoever he shall say unto you. Whatsoever. All things whatsoever he shall say unto you. That's the word of the Lord. No wonder, no wonder Jesus said, look at this. Matthew chapter 24. Matthew chapter 24. And here we're reading from verse 37, uh, 35. Matthew chapter 24, verse 35. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my words shall not pass away. My words shall not pass away. Everything will be fulfilled in Jesus' name. It will be fulfilled in your life. Fulfilled in your ministry. And fulfilled in your family. Fulfilled in our church in Jesus' name. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall not pass away. Because this is the word in the book, the book of the Lord, that is preeminent, above, exalted, above any other book here on earth. We're coming to John chapter 16. John chapter 16, and I'm reading from verse 12 here, John chapter 16, reading from verse 12, it says, I have yet many things to say unto you, but ye cannot bear them now. Here is Jesus Christ talking to his own disciples, he said, so far, so good. All the words of Moses we have got, that is the word of God that he gave through Moses we have got, and those words are mighty and powerful, you know. There are people who, are, who only keep to a part of the Bible. They say, well, all the Old Testament, how about that? How about that? That's the word of the Lord. That's the book of the Lord. Do you remember when Satan came to Jesus and tempted Jesus and gave the first temptation and said, If thou be the Son of God, command that these stones be made bread. And Jesus said, what did he say? What did he say? He said, it is written. It is written. Somebody say, it is written. That's from Deuteronomy. And then he quoted what was written and he defeated Satan. With this book, you will defeat every demon. You will defeat every evil spirit. Every challenge in your life, you will overcome in Jesus' name. And the devil came from another corner and he said, you know, this is this. You get to the top of the temple and jump down, fall down, so that uh, the people will know that you are such a great man, son of God. And Jesus said again, it is written. And he went back to the Old Testament and he quoted something you know, that was written again. And then eventually he said, you know, all these things have been given unto me. And if you will fall down and worship me, I will hand over everything to you. And Jesus said once again, it is written. It is so important to understand. It's so important to know the word of God because it is this word that will give you victory. I see victorious people there. And you'll be victorious through this word in Jesus' name. And so all that was written, Jesus Christ believed. And Jesus Christ stood on. And Jesus said, all those Pharisees and Sadducees, they came to him. They said, hi about this, hi about this. And Jesus said, you know your problem? You're here because you do not know the scriptures, nor the power of God. And he was referring to the Old Testament. And so he gave authority to the Old Testament. And now he said, I've told you many things too, because the Father had said, he was going to, to send me to this world and to Israel and that I will tell you all the things. He said now, but I've not finished. Look at verse 13. How be it when he, the spirit of truth is come, what will he do? When the spirit of truth is come, he will, he will guide you into some truth. So that after the end of the Bible, somebody will still come after the Father has revealed from his mouth all the Old Testament. And Jesus, the Son of God, has given us the word in the Gospels. And then the Holy Ghost has given us all the, all the messages of the Lord until the end of Revelation. After the Father, the Son, the Holy Ghost, after they have rounded up everything, now something remains that an angel will come and tell us. Is that right? When the Heavenly Father has spoken, and Jesus the Son has spoken, and the Holy Ghost has spoken, everything is final. 
And you know, even in the world, if you go to maybe if you go to a particular national occasion, and then the president of the country has spoken. There's nobody that will rise up again and say, excuse me, uh, while the president is still there, once the president speaks, everything is final. And the King of kings and the Lord of lords, Jesus Christ, has told us, the Father sent him and the Father has spoken, and the Son has spoken, and the Holy Ghost has spoken. When he's come, he will guide you into all truth. No other angel, no other man can add to this. This one is final. My Bible is complete. I said my Bible is complete. I can see some people, they are not sure. I am sure my Bible is complete. It is complete in Jesus' name. How be it when he, the spirit of truth has come, he will guide you to all truth. For he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak. And I will show you things to come. The preeminence of the book of the Lord. As heaven is higher than the earth, and as God is higher than all men, so the thoughts of God, the words of God, the book of God is higher, is greater, is deeper, is richer than the books of men. The usefulness of men's books will end on earth. Think about any book. A book in science, a book in philosophy, a book in mathematics, a book of history, a book of geography, a book or a book of uh, in IT, any book. All the usefulness of all the books that are written by men uh, wants to die. That's all. That's all. The usefulness of those books will end here on earth, but the book of God will guide us to heaven. I said the book of God will guide us to heaven. This is the only book that gives hope beyond the grave. What are you going to do with the book? Reach it to be wise. Believe it to be saved. You believe the words. You believe the word of repentance coming from the book. You believe the word about Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, our Savior. You believe that and so you are saved and you obey it to be holy. Obey ye to be holy. You are not just hearing the word, hearing the word. Be not hearers only, but be ye doers of the word. Meditate on its precepts, and you will succeed. I said you will succeed. You pray and receive the promises of the book, and you are going to be fruitful in Jesus' name. Be saturated with its contents. And be transformed. You see, when the word of God saturates your heart, saturates your life, you'll not do some foolish things, some dumb things, some things that will get you into trouble. You build your life on this book and you'll be eternally rewarded in Jesus' name. Tell me about you there. The proclamation of the book for liberation. It, you proclaim the book for liberation. Uh, let, let's come to the word of God and see what the word of God does. It tells us in, uh, in uh, Isaiah chapter 29. Isaiah chapter 29. And I'm reading from verse 11. Isaiah chapter 29. And here we're reading from verse 11. It tells us in verse 11. It says that the mission of all is become unto you as the words of a book that is sealed. Which men deliver to one that is learned, saying, Read this, I pray thee. And he saith, I cannot, for it is sealed. You see, there are people, they, they don't get the liberation from the word of God, the salvation from the word of God, the transformation from the word of God, the healing virtue from the word of God, the anointing from the word of God, the power, the boldness, the courage from the word of God. You know why? It's like a sealed book to them. Although they are learned, and they can read, you know, they can read any other book of man, they can read any other book published by men, and they can understand that. They can even teach that. But it, when you come to the word of God, to the book of the Lord, it's a sealed book unto them. That's what you're saying here. Somebody gives them the book of the Lord and says, read this. said, I cannot because it is sealed. But thank God when you are born again. When you are saved, when the Spirit of God takes over your life, 
the author of the word, then comes to interpret the word to you, you'll understand in Jesus' name. Look at verse 12, look at verse 12. And the book is delivered to him that is not learned, saying, read this, I pray thee. And he says, I am not learned, I cannot read. Those who can read, for them the book is sealed. Those who cannot read, they are helpless because they say, I cannot read. You know what happens then? Then they give themselves into the hands of the people that pretend to understand the Bible. Look at verse 13, wherefore the Lord said, for as much as these people draw near with their mouth and with their lips do honor me, but they have removed their heart far from me and their fear toward me is taught, tell me, by the precept of men. You see, when you are learned, but the book is sealed to you. You are not learned, and so you cannot read and understand. And you give yourself to the hands of people that will interpret it to you. And they do not have the right interpretation. Then uh, there is no deliverance, there is no salvation, there is no liberation. Because their precept is taught by the words of men. And come to Mark chapter 7. Mark chapter 7, and I'm reading from verse 6. Mark chapter 7, we're looking at verse 6. I'm waiting for you. Open your Bible. Have you opened the place I'm looking for? Mark chapter 7. If you have opened it, where are you? Remember this class now, where this is for training. Uh -huh. I'm still waiting for you. Mark chapter 7. Mark chapter 7. Tell me your verse. Verse 6. I'm going to read now. And he answered and said unto them, Well, as Isaiah proph uh, prophesied of you hypocrites, as it is written, These people honoreth me with their leaves, but their heart is far from me. Me. And then he goes on to say, I'll be it in vain. Do they worship me? Teach him for doctrine, the commandments of men. There are people that, well, they might read one verse of the Bible and then they shoot off. Then they go preaching. They go talking and they are bringing out the words of men, the philosophy of men, the ideas of men. And Jesus said that was the problem of the people that were reading the Bible and didn't understand. That's why the Lord is sending you out. That although those people that were meeting were talking to, they're reading the Bible, they're going for meeting, they're going for worship, and it appears that somebody has been preaching to them there. But we don't understand. That's what we're told in Acts of the Apostles, chapter Acts of the Apostles, chapter eight. Look at Acts chapter eight, and I'm reading from verse twenty-nine. Acts of the Apostles, chapter eight, reading from verse twenty-nine. In Acts chapter eight, verse twenty-nine, here it tells us, chapter twenty-eight, verse twenty-nine. It says, "Then the Spirit said unto Philip." Go near and join thyself to this chariot. And Philip ran thither to him and had him reach the prophet Isaiah and said, Understandest thou what thou readest? He was reading the book of Isaiah. That he said, The book of the Lord reaches through the prophet Isaiah. And he said, Do you understand what you read? And he said, How can I? This is a highly placed man. How can I? This is a man that are going to worship in Jerusalem. And he said, how can I? This is a man interested in the things of God. And he said, how can I? This is a man that possessed the Bible, the Old Testament, all by himself. When not many people possessed the Bible at that time. Because it was the time before the days of preaching. This man was a great man. This man was a rich man. This man was uh, an official of his country. And yet he said, how can I accept some man should guide me? And he desired Philip that he would come up and see it was him. And the place of the scripture which he read was this. He was led as a sheep to the slaughter. And like a lamb dumb before a sharer. And so he opened not his mouth. In his humiliation, his judgment was taken away. And who shall declare his generation? For his life is taken up from the earth. And the eunuch answered Philip and said, I pray thee, of whom speaketh the prophet this? Of himself, of some other man? Then Philip opened his mouth 
and began at the same scripture and preached unto him and preach unto him Jesus. He revealed the Savior to him and the man became liberated from his sin. And the man became saved. And the man uh, would then go to the water and said, here is water. What hinders me to be baptized? He said, if you believe with all your heart, thou mayest. And then he was baptized. And then he went on his way rejoicing. The joy of salvation had come. I want to remind you that anytime you go out, you must go with your Bible. I said you'll go with your Bible. Number one, take the book with you everywhere. Take the book. Take the book. If you are going out and you have not taken the Bible, you are not ready yet. Go back. Take the book. Take the book. Not only that, you trust the book. You trust the book. You see, there are people, they want to talk to other people, and they are kind of ruminating, they are thinking, they are imagining in their mind, what shall I say? What shall I say? Say the book. Talk the book. You take the book, you trust the book. Your words may not amount to much. Your words may not bring conviction. Your words may not help anybody. But the words of the Lord will bring salvation to the people. Number one is to take the book. Number two is to trust the book. Number three, teach the book. Teach the book. You are your church and people have come. There have a lot of problems. It's not just, you know, what you think. It's not just what you feel. It's not just an idea that comes to you, human ideas. Teach the book. Teach the book. And go from place to place in the book. And the book, the word of God, will bring solution to the lives of the people in Jesus' name. Talk the book. Talk the book. You're testifying and you're talking to other people about uh, something. And make sure that you word the words you are saying. The talk coming out of your mouth is something that will benefit people. And you will talk to them in such a way that the word of God will come in their hearts, penetrate their hearts, and they'll be saved. They'll be born again. They'll be liberated. And any kind of problem they have will be solved in Jesus' name. Think the book. Think the book. This book of the Lord shall not depart out of your mouth, but you will meditate therein day and night. You see, our thoughts influence us. You know, something has happened, might have happened in your personal life, might have happened in your place of work, might happen in your neighborhood, and then you are thinking and thinking. Your thinking may make you depressed. Your thinking may make you go down. Your thinking may even destroy you. But if you're not thinking about those things, and you are thinking the book, you're thinking the book because God has said, My thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways. As the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my thoughts higher than your thoughts. And the word that I speak and the word that has gone out will not come back to me void. It will accomplish that for which is appointed in your life, and you'll be successful and progressive in Jesus' name. Take the book, trust the book. Teach the book. Talk the book. Think the book. If you do that, and you're always sharing the word with other people, what's going to be the result? There's going to be libration. I said there's going to be libration. Another word for that is deliverance. Another word for that is salvation. Number one, in this book is for the sinner's Libration, the sinners' libration. We're coming to Romans chapter 7. Romans chapter 7, and I'm reading from verse 14. Romans chapter 7, verse 14. It says, For we know that the law is spiritual, but I am carnal, sold under sin. For that which I do, I allow not. This is a sinner. For what I would, that I do not, and what I hate, that I do. If then I do that, which I would not, I consent unto the law, that it is good. Now, then, it is no more I that do it, tell me, but sin that dwelleth in me. And the man is looking for liberation. And the sinner is looking for liberation. And so he says in verse 24, O wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from this body of 
dead. Chapter 8, verse 2. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. This word will bring the word of salvation, the word of liberation, and the word of transformation into the lives of the people in Jesus' name. So, as we're going out, you take the book with you, and you trust the book, and you talk the book, and you teach the book, and you think the book, and the promises in the book will avail for the people you are talking to in Jesus' name. Number two, the word, the book, is for the soul's liberation. The soul's liberation. We're looking at Ezekiel chapter 2. Ezekiel chapter 2. I'm reading here from verse 9. Ezekiel chapter 2. And we're reading from verse 9. The Lord was going to send Ezekiel to the people. But first of all, something must happen. First of all, something must happen. Chapter 2 verse 9. In Ezekiel chapter 2 verse 9 and when I look behold an hand was sent unto me and lo a roll of a book was therein a roll of a book was therein and then he was commanded to eat that book to take that book taste the Lord taste the word of the Lord and see that he is good it was only after that was told in chapter 3 verse 1 moreover he said unto me son of man eat that thou findest that is eat that roll eat the book eat this roll and go speak unto the house of Israel so I opened my mouth and it caused me to eat that roll to assimilate that word to receive that word to learn that word and he said unto me son of man cause thy bed to eat and fill thy bowels with this roll that I give thee. Then did I eat it, and it was in my mouth as honey for sweetness. And he said unto me, Son of man, go get unto the house of Israel and speak my words unto them. You have to taste the book. Receive the book, eat the book, accept the book, and take in everything the book has, the word of God. And then you are able to go out now, and souls will be saved through you in Jesus' name. The book is for the soul's liberation. Number three is for the stranger's liberation. Stranger's the liberation. You see, Philip, that's Acts of the Apostles. We read that already. Acts chapter 8, verse 29 to verse 35. That Shinnok, Ethiopia, was a stranger to Philip. They had never met. You'll find people like that in a taxi, people like that in the bus, people like that on the train, people like that sitting by your side in the airplane. You'll find people like this. You've never met them before, and yet you have the weapon for their liberation. And God will help you. You bring the word out. They'll be liberated in Jesus' name. Number four, this is the book for the slaves' liberation. You see, there are people who are slaves to bad habits. They are slaves to evil things. They are slaves to occultism. They are slaves to demons. They are slaves to powers beyond them. And this is the word that we are going to speak that is going to liberate them. Jeremiah chapter 2. Jeremiah chapter 2. I'm reading from verse 13 and verse 14. Jeremiah Chapter 2, verse 13, For my people have committed two evils. They have forsaken me, the fountain of living waters, and huge them out cisterns, broken cisterns that cannot hold water. Is Israel a servant? Is he a homeborn slave? Why is he spoiled? Is he a slave? Why is he spoiled? And it is this word that will bring the liberation. Look at verse 19. In verse 19, Then O wickedness shall correct thee, and the backsliders shall reprove thee. Know therefore, and see, that it is an evil sin and bitter, that thou hast forsaken the Lord thy God, and that my fear is not in thee, says the Lord of hosts. But eventually, as you bring this word unto them, Liberation will come. Deliverance will come. Forgiveness will come. 
It's a word that will give them assurance of the forgiveness and the transformation of their lives. We're looking at Second Peter chapter 2, verse 20. Second Peter chapter 2, reading from verse 20. It says in verse 20, For if after they have escaped the pollutions of the world through the knowledge of the Lord, and the, and the Savior Jesus Christ, they again entangle therein and overcome. The latter end is worse with them than the beginning. You see, they become slaves, those who backslide. They become slaves, those who are hooked on either marijuana or cigarette or alcohol or immorality or whatever. But as we bring the word to them, this word will set them free. I said the word will set them free. The word is for the sinner's liberation. The word is for the soul's liberation. The word is for the stranger's liberation. The word is for the slave's liberation. I want you to think about the whole state now. As you are in that state, state of seer and the reaching of seers and the leaders and the preachers and the evangelists and the pastors who are there, this word is for the state's liberation. Sometimes a state might be kind of a devoted to tradition. Is the one that will liberate them. A state might be devoted to maybe occultism. Is the word that will liberate them. A state might, might be kind of devoted to wickedness, evil. It is this word we are going to go to them. You are going to give to them. You cannot go with bare hands and say, I want to liberate the state. It's the book of the Lord. It's the word of the Lord. We're going to preach everywhere, everywhere in every state. We're going to preach this word. In every local government, we are going to preach the word. In every community neighborhood, we are going to preach the word. And you are going to find out it is the word that will liberate them. There may be some churches there. You know, they are giving to incense burning in those remote places. They are giving to candle in those remote places. That will not bring liberation. They are giving to maybe prayer, prayer, prayer. That will not bring liberation. It is the word, the book of the Lord. And it is going to bring liberation to them. And God will use you. And God will use me and use us together to bring the word of liberation, salvation unto the people in Jesus' name. We're looking at Second, uh, Second Corinthians chapter 5. Second Corinthians chapter 5, and I'm reading from verse 18. Second Corinthians chapter 5, we're looking at it from verse 18. It tells us in verse 18, And all things are of God, who has reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ, and has given us the ministry of reconciliation. Has he given you? What has he given you? I said, what has he given you? And through you, you are going to effect that ministry, and many people are going to be delivered in Jesus' name. Verse 19, to which that is, that God was in Christ reconciling the world unto himself, not imputing their trespasses unto them, and he has committed unto us, tell me, and he has committed unto you, tell me, the word of reconciliation. Now then, we are ambassadors for Christ. As though God did beseech you by us, we pray you in Christ's church, be ye reconciled unto God. And you know that this book is also for the saints liberation. The saints liberation. You know, sometimes somebody says, I'm born again already. Yes, you are born again. Yes, you are born again. But even after being born again uh, as children of God, as saints in the kingdom of God, we still need, you know, there are some things we're kind of bound ways. It may be a particular kind of danger, a particular kind of difficulty, a particular kind of disease, a particular kind of sickness, or maybe some things that happen concurrently in your life. You're born again, you're a child of God, and yet you still need total deliverance, and this book will deliver you will set you free. And 
this book will be the book of liberation for every sage in the whole church. You know, sometimes people come together, they say we're looking for revival, and they leave the Bible behind. They say we're looking for revival, they pray and they sing and they do a lot of things and they shout and they do this and that without the book. It is the book that will give us the liberation we're looking for. Look at Galatians chapter 2, and I'm reading from verse 4. Galatians chapter 2, and we're reading from verse 4 here. It says, and that because, that because of false brethren on unawares brought in, who came in privately privately to spy out our liberty, which we have in Christ Jesus, that they might bring us, us saints, us believers, us children of God, all, us members of the church, bring us into bondage to whom we gave by subjection. No, not for an hour that the truth of the gospel might continue with you. You see, the truth of the gospel, that's what will keep us free. Look at chapter 2, verse 20. In verse 20 it says, I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for who? I said for who? You are delivered in Jesus' name. Amen. Chapter 5, chapter 5, I'm reading from verse 1. It says, Stand fast therefore in the liberty wherewith Christ has made us free. He's talking to believers. He's talking to saints. You see, there are saints. They put their neck under a yoke again. And they put themselves under some bondage again. And the place they want to go, they cannot go. They're under bondage of fear. And the things they want to do, they cannot do. They're under the bondage of limitation. Human limitation. And Paul, the apostle, is saying, don't you have the book? Take that book. It will set you free. Trust that book. It will set you free. Think that book, it will set you free. And talk that book, it will set you free. Teach that book, it will set you free. You'll be free in Jesus' name. Stand fast, stand fast, stand fast therefore in the liberty wherewith Christ has made us free and be not entangled again, saints, and be not entangled again, believers, and be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. I come into you now. Number seven. Number one is a sinner's liberation. Every sinner that's in their lives keeping them under bondage, this book will liberate them. It's for the soul's liberation. It's for the stranger's liberation. It's for the slave's liberation. It's for the state's liberation. It's for the saint's liberation. It's for self liberation. It's for self liberation. You know. Many, th many people wait too long. They have a problem. They have a challenge. And they remain in that challenge. And they're not going to do anything about it. And they say, I'm waiting for prayer warrior. The book is in your hand. I'm waiting for the pastor. The book is in your hand. When you get to the prayer warrior, when you get to the pastor, when you get to the counselor, what are you going to do? They're going to open the book. They're going to read the book. They're going to tell you the book. They're going to emphasize the book. They're going to encourage you, exhort you, believe the book. And as you believe, it will happen in your life in Jesus' name. He sent his word and healed them. And you can receive the word. Speak the word only and my servant shall be healed. You can speak the word to yourself. And you can open that book and see the word. Because the word is for self-libration. You are liberated today. You are set free today. Every attack in your life, go back to the book. Every challenge in your life, go back to the book. Every conflict in your life, go back to the book. Any kind of uh, difficulty in your life, go back to the book. I say, uh, chapter 52. I say, uh, chapter 52. I'm reading from verse 1. Self liberation. I'm liberated. I said, I am liberated. I said, I am liberated. You know, th this word is wonderful. Are you here, my people? Yeah. I said, this word is wonderful. Yeah. You see, let me give you one testimony. Are you there? Yeah. I must see your face if you are going to hear the testimony. You want the testimony? Yeah. 
you know, we had, we had the retreat, December retreat, and we had the January uh, conference, uh, that is the Congress. And then uh, there was one beloved brother. This brother was sick to the point of death. And the kidneys are totally packed up completely. And the kidneys will not function anymore. And he was sent to Lagos. In Lagos here, he was going through dialysis three times a week. And then later they put it at two times a week. And then later it became just once a week. And they said they couldn't help him in Lagos anymore. They said they should go back home and, you know, do whatever. Because they were expecting he was going to pack up. He was going to die. And when he got to, you know, when he got to back home, uh, the wife saw his condition. It was terrible. And the wife did not know what to do. And so the wife went to the region of Asia in that place. And, and what I'm telling you, we actually spoke to that uh, wife and the brother himself. After the miracle took place, uh, the wife uh, went to the overseer and said, what am I going to do? My husband is dying. The two kidneys have totally packed up and nothing is helping anymore. We have exhausted all our money on dialysis, dialysis, dialysis. And the uh, pastor, the overseer thought, what am I going to do? Then he brought out, he downloaded the message, uh, man's sickness for God's glory. Do you remember that? I said, do you remember that? Man's sickness for God's glory and then another one the omnipotence of god somebody help me shout that he gave uh, those two messages to the sister he said go back home and play that to your husband no prayer nothing go back home and play that to your husband and remember the man was you know at the brink of dying almost dying and the wife got home and the wife said eh, my husband the overseer gave me this and they played the first one and they played and played and played. nobody to pray for them i'm talking of what happened after the congress this is january january miracle and february miracle is coming to you and then after they listened to that, they changed now and they played, um, you know, this omnipotence of God. By the time they woke up, the following morning, everything was all right. And you are going to be all right. I said you are going to be all right. Those messages are there. Those messages are there. Get them, play them, play them, listen to them, listen to them. Because they're self-libration. The Lord will liberate you. There is no yoke in your life. The word of God will not take care of. The Lord will liberate you in Jesus' name. Isaiah, Isaiah chapter 52. I'm reading from verse 1. Isaiah chapter 52, verse 1. The book for personal self-liberation. Awake, awake. Put on thy strength, O Zion. Put on thy beautiful garment. So Jerusalem, the holy city, for henceforth, henceforth, there shall no more come into thee the uncircumcised and the unclean. Shake thyself from the dust. This personal, this personal, if you reject that evil thing, it will go. If you say no to Satan, he will run away. If you say no to all the works of the devil, they'll be finished in your life in Jesus' name. Shake thyself from the doors and rise. Sit down, O Jerusalem. Loose thyself from the bands of thy neck, O captive daughter of Zion. You are set free. Because we are told in John chapter 8. John chapter 8. And I'm reading here from verse 32. John chapter 8 verse 32. And you shall know the truth. And the truth shall make you free. Personal, personal, personalize it. And I will know the truth. And the truth will set me free. The truth will set me free. You'll be free in Jesus name. Point number 3 now. Our progress through the book of landmarks. Our progress through the book of landmarks. You see, we're going to make progress this year. This year, this my last month, was the beginning of a new dawn. And this year, there's going to be the, the new dawn of revival in our church. New dawn of progress. New dawn of soul winning unprecedented success is so winning in Jesus name 
But you know what? We need this book. And it's the book of landmarks. I'm reading to you from uh, Proverbs chapter 22. Proverbs chapter 22. And I'm reading from verse 28. Proverbs chapter 22, verse 28. It says, Remove not the ancient landmark which thy fathers have said. Remove not the ancient landmark which your fathers have said. You know, from the beginning of the Bible to the end of the Bible, we have these landmarks that our fathers in the faith, in the Bible, they have set for us. The apostles have said, the prophets have said, and the people of God inspired of the Holy Ghost, they have set for us. And it says, Remove not the ancient landmark which thy fathers have said. Seest thou a man diligent in his business? After he tells us, take hold of the landmarks and believe the landmarks and preach the landmarks. Now he says, Yes, thou, a man diligent in his business, he shall stand before kings, he shall not stand before mean men. And as you take the landmarks uh, this year, the landmark of repentance and the landmark of faith in Christ and the landmark of real conversion. The landmark of if any man be in Christ is a new creature. All things have passed away. And behold, all things are become new. The landmarks of righteousness, except your righteousness shall exceed the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees, ye shall in no wise get into the kingdom of God. The landmark of purity of heart, blessed are the purity and the pure in heart, for they shall see God. The landmark of holiness, that he shall follow peace with all men, and holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. The landmark of faith, taking the shield of faith, where by will be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one as you take the landmarks with you and then you go out to souls and you're reaching out to them salvation is going to come healing is going to come deliverance is going to come look at chapter 23 chapter 23 and i'm reading here from verse 10 chapter 23 verse 10 remove not the old landmark Remove not the old landmark and enter not into the fields of the fatherless, for the Redeemer is mighty, and he shall plead their cause with thee. Apply thine heart unto instruction and thine ears to the words of knowledge. The words of knowledge, the knowledge of salvation and the knowledge of sanctification and the knowledge of the cardinal doctrines of the word of God stay with them abide with them and don't uh, throw any part of the word of god away and the lord himself will make sure that this work will prosper in your hands in jesus name I, 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 did i hear an amen over there yeah. deuteronomy chapter 12 i'm reading from verse 28 deuteronomy chapter 12 and we're reading from verse 28 deuteronomy chapter 12 verse 28 observe and hear all these words that I command thee. You see that uh, there's nothing to say. This one is not important. Of course, it's the word of the Lord. Everything is important. It says, observe, hear all the words, all, all, all the words which I command thee, that it may go well with thee and with thy children forever. When thou doest, when thou doest that which is good and right in the sight of the Lord thy God. And then he tells us in, a verse, in verse 32, look at verse 32 there. It says, what things soever I command you, observe to do it. Don't say, I don't accept this, I don't accept that. All the doctrines of the word of God, whatsoever things I command you, observe to do it. Thou shalt not add thereto, nor diminish from it. You will not add to the word of God. You will not diminish from the word of God. I'm coming to Jeremiah chapter 26. And we're looking at verse 2. Jeremiah chapter 26. And we're reading from verse 2. Whatever your ministry, you're working as an evangelist, you're preaching as a soul winner, and you're leading house fellowship, you're you know, singing the choir, you're leading the women, and you're pastoring the church. Whatever your ministry, look at this. Jeremiah chapter 26 and verse 2. Thus says the Lord, stand in the court of the Lord's house and speak to all the cities of Judah which come to worship in the house of the Lord, in, in the Lord's house. 
Tell me what follows there. All, all, all the words that I command thee to speak unto them, diminish not a word. All the words, all the words. There's nothing to take out. There's nothing to take off. There's nothing to diminish. There's nothing to subtract. Everything we give unto them. Jeremiah chapter 36. I'm reading from verse 2. Jeremiah chapter 36. And we're reading here from verse 2. It tells us in verse 2, Take thee a roll of a book, and write therein all the words that I have spoken unto thee. All the words that I have spoken unto thee. Every time you sing all, all. Don't take anything away. Don't say, well, I can't preach that, that people should be free from sin. I can't preach that, that go and sin no more. I can't preach that, that God will give us the victory and make us triumphant over every sin. It says, don't take anything away from the word of God. And then in verse 3, it says, It may be the house of Judah will hear all the evil which I propose to do unto them, that they may return every man from his evil way, that I may forgive their iniquity and their sin. The Lord will forgive as we give the word of God to them. Ezekiel chapter 3. Ezekiel chapter 3. I'm reading from verse 10. In Ezekiel chapter 3 verse 10, look at what he said. Moreover, he said unto me, son of man, all the words that I shall speak unto thee, all the words that I shall speak unto thee, everything in the word of God, he says unto thee, receive in thine ear, and hear with thine ears, go and get them, get thee to them of captivity unto the children of thy people, and speak unto them, and tell them, thus says the Lord God, whether they will hear, or whether they will forbear. The totality of the word we're going to preach. I said the entirety of the word we're going to preach. We're not going to leave anything out. And as we speak, all the word of God, it will do good in their lives and it will prosper your ministry in Jesus' name. Matthew chapter 28, I'm reading from verse 20. Matthew chapter 28, we're looking at verse 20, teaching them to observe what follows here. All things, you see that everywhere from Deuteronomy, all things, and from Jeremiah, all things, and from Isaiah, all things, everything the Lord has declared unto us from the word of repentance to the word of faith in Christ and to conversion so that their life will be turned around. That's what we're going to preach, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever. I have commanded you, and lo, I am with you. How long? All we, even to the end of the world. And somebody said, Amen. Amen. Acts of the Apostles, chapter 5. I'm reading from verse 20. Acts of the Apostles, chapter 5. And we're looking at verse 20. It says, Go, stand, and speak in the temple to the people. What's the next word there? All the words of this life. All the words of this life. You know, the Lord is very careful to say every time, you don't have any right as a human being, you don't have any right as a child of God to take anything away from the words of God. Go, stand and speak in the temple to the people all the words of this life. And as we speak that word, they'll be converted. They'll be transformed. And a miracle of conversion, a miracle of transformation, liberation will happen in their lives in Jesus' name. Acts of the Apostles, chapter 10, verse 33. Acts chapter 10, and we're reading from verse 33. It says in verse 33, it says immediately, Therefore, I say to thee, and thou hast well done, that thou art come. Now therefore, look at this, now therefore, are we all here present before God to hear, tell me, to hear, tell me out aloud, to hear all things that are commanded thee of God. Acts of the Apostles chapter 20. In Acts chapter 20, I'm reading from verse 26. Acts chapter 20, verse 26, it says, Wherefore I take you to record this name, that I'm pure from the blood of all men, for I have not shunned to declare unto you, tell me, 
all the counsel of God. I have not shown to declare unto you all the counsel of God. We are going to declare the totality of the word of God. The landmarks are unchangeable. The landmarks are the standards and the doctrines and the teaching of Christ. In God's own book, there is no ministry without the landmarks. Somebody says, I have a ministry, just gathering crowds, and there's no repentance. Somebody says, I have a ministry, and it's just gathering crowds, and the word of restitution is missing. Somebody says, I have a ministry, and there's no word of uh, salvation, no word of righteousness. That's quantity without quality. And that's a just religion without righteousness. But there must be conversion, not just to have a congregation. And if we're just preaching the word, and people are looking for miracles without genuine salvation, that's a waste of time. But thank God, we're going to declare the word of God. As you go out, we're not just telling you, come and get miracles, come and get healing, come and get this and that. All those are uh, fringe benefits. But the real thing, the real thing is the salvation of their soul. That they will hear the word of God. They will repent. They will turn to the Lord. And the change will happen in their lives, happen in their families. They'll be on their way to heaven. And then uh, with that salvation, healing will be available. Healing is not number one. What's number one? Tell me, I said, what's number one? Prosperity is not number one. What's number one? Miracles, not number one. What's number one? Science and wonders, not number one. What's number one? Salvation. Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. That's the reason why we're going to go out this year and everywhere we'll preach the word. The word of salvation, the word of transformation, the word of liberation that will turn their lives around. And so as you go, preach the word, the whole word of God. Look at Jeremiah chapter 48. Jeremiah chapter 48. God wants us to be faithful and there is no reward for the unfaithful. Jeremiah chapter 48. I'm reading from verse 10. Jeremiah chapter 48. We're reading from verse 10. If you have not closed your Bible, open chapter 48 of Jeremiah, verse 10, and you are going to read it. One, two, three, go. All right, because you are reading for the first time now, number, second time, one, two, three, go. Finally, one, two, three, go. You see what the prophecy is telling us, Cursed be he that doeth the work of the Lord deceitfully. If you are not telling the sinners to repent, would Jesus say, we must tell them, you're doing the work of God deceitfully. If you are telling them, come, you'll bless your butter, you'll bless your bread, and you are not telling them that they must turn away from their sin and get ready for heaven. You are doing the work of God deceitfully. If you are telling them healing, deliverance, miracles, signs, wonders, without salvation, you are doing the work of God deceitfully. Cursed be he that doeth the work of the Lord deceitfully. <clears throat> and cursed be he that keepeth back the sword from the blood. What's the sword? I said, what's the sword? Let the word of God pierce them. Let the word of God convict them. Let it make them know that they are sinners and they need to turn to the Lord. And when that sword of the Spirit reaches them and then drives them on their knees, they will repent and salvation will come. We will preach the word. We will teach the word. And we're going to stand on this word in Jesus' name. The most important book to the wise. We are wise, and this is the most important book, and we're going to read that book. We're going to meditate on that book. We're going to give attention to that book. And we're going to analyze that book, apply that book to our lives in Jesus' name. We're going to obey the book, and we're going to take the book with us everywhere we go, and we're going to preach this word that will liberate people in Jesus' name. 
Let's rise up and make a commitment to the Lord and say, Lord, I've had your word from the book of the Lord. And I'm going to give myself unreservedly, unreservedly to this word. And this word will benefit every life. And through you, many will come to know the Lord. You will not do the work of God deceitfully in Jesus' name. Open your mouth and pray to the Lord.